So that's a, a case report that uh, stems from uh, sort of a unique uh, patient base we see in New York at Columbia. And because the university does a lot of organ transplants, hearts, lungs, kidneys, livers, etc., we see a fair number of patients who have post-transplant lymphoproliferative disorders. Now these diseases are complex and they come in a variety of flavors. Uh, monomorphic PTLD, which is like large cell lymphoma, polymorphic PTLD, which can be more like a reactive uh, disorder. There can be Hodgkin lymphoma uh, arising as a PTLD. But believe it or not, we see a fair number of PTLDs, the bulk of which happen to be B-cell lymphomas. We see a fair number that happen to be T-cell lymphoma, and that includes cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. And so this group of diseases are heterogeneous, and, and like T-cell lymphomas in general, there's not a lot of clear data on how to manage these patients. And what we do know is that when these patients die, they often die of infection which is a result of the intense chemotherapies we use. So strategies now are, are evolving to try and uh, use less immunosuppressive therapy uh, that reduces the likelihood of infection. So we've had a number of patients, including uh, this one that you refer to, is a young woman who had a, 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 a peripartum cardiomyopathy. And she was a young woman with a, a number of children. But after she delivered, she developed profound cardiomyopathy. She uh, needed a heart transplant. She got a heart transplant. And uh, a couple of, two to three years maybe after the transplant, she developed a massive abdominal mass and uh, turned out to be a peripheral T-cell lymphoma. So we followed many of the typical regimens you might use. So we used an etoposide-containing frontline regimen in the form of EPOC. Uh, and she was refractory to that. Uh, and despite my better inclinations, we actually went to use a gemcitabine platinum-based therapy, a second-line therapy, and she was resistant to that. And so she had primary refractory T-cell lymphoma. And these patients typically don't survive long at all. It might be measured in weeks. And so uh, our current practice at Columbia would be to move the new drugs much earlier to second-line. But in this case, a young mom, we needed to get her to a transplant. We thought we would give standard gemcitabine platinum a shot. So having been primary refractory, we treated her with prolotrexate. And she had something close to a 15 centimeter mass in her abdomen. And as she became, uh, re as she relapsed with each therapy or became refractory, she developed new sites of disease. So we gave her prolotrexate and uh, she had abdominal symptoms from the mass and she entered a complete remission. And uh, after that complete remission, we took her to auto stem cell transplant, and she's now been in remission five to six years. So in the case report you refer to, it's really designed, and in conjunction with another paper we published in JNCI, to suggest that we shouldn't be putting these new drugs off. We should be trying to integrate them earlier. And at least in the case of polytrexate, the data are clear. You use that drug earlier in line of therapy, and if you use it with leucovorin, the risk of mucositis is substantially reduced. And so it really demonstrates that when a patient fails EPOC, E-P-O-C-H, five drugs, plus GDP, another three drugs, that you know these new drugs can work where traditional chemotherapy has failed. And again, it goes back to our original point. These therapies typically fail because they're not developed specifically for T-cell lymphoma, they're derivative therapies. And so in this particular case, she's done remarkably well. I saw her for her post five year visit and her heart transplant doc couldn't be happier and uh, she's now back to life raising her children. And so it's a, it's a rewarding story uh, of a young woman who's been hit with something dreadful in her life and a time when she should be happy, but uh, it's testament to how science and new developments can be impacting these diseases in real time.